All right. Well, there it is. Let's see what happens here. Uh, recording live, Melon TV for Tuesday, August 9th, a little after 3 o'clock. Uh, let's see what happens here, friends. Had some problems and some issues with Melon uh, before. The camera was just shutting on and off, and it wouldn't uh, couldn't do anything with it. So I'm going to retry it. It is Tuesday, August 9th, uh, a little after 3 o'clock. I'm your host, Pastor Rick, still here. I uh, try to get through the coughs. <laughs> That's not hasn't been pleasant. Uh, it's been over two or three weeks now. Uh, still kind of got a really aggravated cough going on. I can't get rid of it. So uh, I'm just going to <laughs> try to bear through it here, uh, do the best I can. Uh, it has not been uh, easy here. It's not been uh, just, you know, try to do those normal things and... Uh, well, you guys know you get that that cough and stuff. I don't know. I don't. Know. It's it's just a real aggravating talk or cough. So every time I try to talk, it it starts aggravating again. Uh, so I don't know. I just have to get through it and do the best I can. Uh, all right, uh, Anchor Cast Box, you guys are on the air. How you doing, Pastor Rick? Here. Oops. Let's get that going again um <laughs> there it is uh not trying to get too loud but uh i'm doing a full podcast just uh recording live here on melon and again we got youtube with us tonight or today this afternoon uh a little bit early but uh i just wanted to get on here uh give you a quick message here actually we're going to relation 20 through 22 and a whole lot more so uh let's see we've got that let me get my notes and my notebooks uh my friends it's been uh it's been a pretty rough few weeks here i'm not gonna lie it's been tough i've been kind of struggling and fighting through a few things uh yeah and uh well you know how it is all right so get those notes here again uh grab your notebooks your bibles of course that fresh cup of coffee and uh settle down let's have an afternoon bible study back on here friends uh got all the audio channels up and running channel one and two or three actually uh <laughs> keep forgetting where i'm at here uh so yeah we've got all the channels rolling uh it is good amen all right so i don't know how this is going to go first time uh i'm recording live but then i have to upload it to the channels uh for some reason our internet's just not working well it hasn't been well for a while so i decided to go ahead and just try to do it this way and uh you know record it see what happens so amen my friends all right let me go ahead and and uh get that rolling here we're gonna uh, again our opening scriptures is going to be through revelation 20 through 22 we're gonna read that and a whole lot more so settle in my friends let's see if we can get rolling here we're gonna pray it in uh, amen got that rolling channel three looks good uh amen got that thunder in here uh amen you can see about you know how it goes with my microphone here i never know with that so i think i think everything else is looking good uh it sounded good so far oh my friends let's go ahead and just pray it on in let's get uh let's get to it let's get to the bible study and some church service like i said a little after three o'clock pastor rick or while i minister podcast network for tuesday august 9th finally back on the air uh, doing a live upload here, and uh, well, we're going to see what happens. So let's get to it. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much as I come before you humbled, grateful for these opportunities to share this good news gospel. Now, you've helped me through and you've gotten me through this last uh, several weeks here as I've struggled uh, through things, uh, God, and uh, well, you got me through, you carried me through, and uh, you know, I never gave up. <laughs> I kept pushing through, even even though I'm coughing right now. 
uh, you kept me pushing through and you kept me moving straight in the direction that you called me to. So I'll give, uh, I just want to give back and, and, and share this good news gospel uh, with others. So I thank you, Father God, for everything you continue to do. It's amazing. And uh, I'm always humbled and always grateful for the opportunities. As I keep moving forward in your mission that you have called me to, Father God. So I keep pushing forward. Well, I want to uh, get pray <laughs> over Wi-Fi, over connections, over the studio here as your hand is on this ministry. I want to pray for family, friends, everybody connected, everybody watching and hearing these broadcasts. Uh, you, uh, you know, just lift them up, encourage them, encourage their hearts, uh, their minds, uh, especially now with all this fear. Uh, uh, every, you know, we seem to be under this big thick cloud of fear and, and division, uh, Father God. Oh, we lean on you, we call on you, we, we hope in you, and uh, <laughs> we just keep giving it all over to you no matter what, uh, Father God. We can't lose uh, lose our sight uh, on you or, and keep our sight on you, keep our minds on you. Thank you for everything, and I uh, always appreciate it. So thank you in your son's precious name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, my friends, let's see if we can get going here. Uh, well, we are going. <laughs> we are going. <laughs> Man. Well, it like I said, it is Tuesday afternoon, the 9th of August already. We're just cruising right along into the month, friends. Uh, trying to get back on here as regularly as I can. But like I said, we've had some constant battles with uh, with the uh with, with the uh oh uh with the uh, wi-fi and everything just not working and not uh not you know not handling it so uh i'm gonna try to get through the best i can i want to you know want to keep on schedule the best i can anyway now i got another podcast scheduled at 10 tonight but i think uh i'm gonna probably uh reset that uh, just to give my voice some uh, extra uh, resting spot, you know, some rest. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I, I don't, you know, it's it's no good here uh, trying to strain. And I have, it's been a continual strain for weeks now. This thing hasn't gone away. So I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with it. But, uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I wanted to get this out. I wanted to get this recorded. Uh, and set up for you so you guys have some, you know, something new, something fresh, my friends, brothers and sisters. Amen. Church is on. Let's get going. Let's get right into our first scripture. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let me pull that pulpit up. Squeeze my chair up here. I found out it was going down. There's something wrong with the uh, bolts on the bottom of it. It is kind of breaking a little bit. So I'm probably going to have to get another chair, but uh anyway par for the course right let's get going i hope you have your fresh cup of coffee my friends uh and your backup you gotta have a backup for your backup to the regular cup of coffee because oh i got some talking to do my friends let's get to it chapter 20 uh in the book of revelation and we are going to go uh like i said through 22 and there's a couple of spots i'm going to leave to you guys to study on your own time but uh for the most part we're going to go back into revelation again i think it's really important uh and really key especially uh with everything in current affairs current uh happenings in the world in the news you guys see it uh Boy, is it just, you know, end times, revelation end times. Uh, so be prepared, not scared, but be prepared, uh, my friends, uh, for sure. So, all right, well, let's get that fresh cup of coffee and uh, let's get going. Amen. All right, let's go to chapter 20 in the book of Revelation here, friends. Satan bound for a thousand years because, well, you know, his time is uh, uh, his time short, so he's making havoc. 
Uh, let's get to it. Chapter one, in the book of uh, Revelation, or chapter twenty in the book of Revelations. Here, Amen. I'm gonna try to do what I can, uh, friends. Again, you guys know my throat. <laughs> I've been coughing like crazy for the last few weeks, and uh, I'm not real happy with it. But I've been just, you know, trying to get better and rest, and uh, uh, having some cough drops with cough syrup, and you know, drinking that tea. Amen. All right. So let me check the cover. I think everything's good. Got a set of wireless headphones, some Bluetooth headphones coming in uh, in the next week or so. Uh, so I will probably not be having these headset. Uh, I'll probably go Bluetooth wireless. So we're going to see a little bit different look. And uh, <laughs> we're going to we're going to see. So I'm just doing a little bit of upgrades and some improvements here. So Always on the move, my friends. Amen. All right, let's get to it. Chapter 20. Oh, my friends, it is good to be here. Good to be with you. Melon TV. Amen. And more. So let's get to it. Now, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, ha uh, having the key of the bottomless pit in a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent we know as the devil, and it says, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that should deceive, uh, that he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed. And that's our key uh, right there, friends. He must be loosed a little season. Well, we don't know how long a little season really is. Could be a million years. It could be a day, but we don't know. So, as he says, he'd be loosed a little season. And I saw thr uh, thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus uh, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither uh, his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again in, in the thousand years or until, I believe that's, let me get that fixed there, until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, blessed, and let's see, we got our channels fading out here. Falling asleep already. It's too early to be doing that. It's in the afternoon here, a little after three o'clock. You're live on the air. Good to see you, friends. Amen. We're reading uh, <laughs> we're reading Revelation uh, twenty through twenty two, so let's go to chapter twenty, verse six. Blessed, as we just finished, actually five, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such. The second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and, <laughs> and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Here it is. Watch this key here. <clears throat> loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in four quarters of the earth now we're going to switch over to gog and magog here to gather them together to battle the number of whom is a thousand of the sea or as the sand of the sea and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and uh fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them uh, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now let's go to the next one. The judgment of the great white throne. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from, and my notes, of course, uh, <laughs> from whose face? 
uh, the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And of course, we talked about that several times. Uh, there are two books of life, a book of life and the Lamb's book of life, just in case you didn't know that. There it is in the book of Revelations here. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Uh, and the dead were judged out of these things, which were written in the books, uh, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged, every man or every man, according to their works. There you go. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire all right let's go to 21 chapter 21 the book of revelations here friends now and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and i saw uh and i john saw the holy city uh, the New Jerusalem, and let me fix that too, uh, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be uh with them there it is and be their god and god now here's the cool part about this friends and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying uh neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne uh said behold i make all things new and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So we could take that right to the bank, my friends. That's a golden check we can cash in. He says, These words are true and faithful. So you got to get into your word, my friends. Amen. All right. And let's go to six. And he, <laughs> and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. In the beginning and the end, I give unto them that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Again, there it is, that uh, free gift of God. Uh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, now watch this, the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, or the lake uh, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Uh, now here it is, which is the second death. So there are two deaths, two resurrections, two book of life. You just got to read Re uh, Revelation uh, to get that part there, friends. So check it out. All right. Uh <laughs> <laughs> always always enjoy <laughs> try to try to set these uh or reset these uh chords and mics and everything it's just awesome all right well let's check it out let's see let's get that there uh let's see where we at here all right so let's go to verse nine the new jerusalem here friends and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven uh, vials. Let's see, lots of notes here. Uh, full of the seven last plagues and talking to me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit uh to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, or that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven uh, from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and 
had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels, and the names there are written thereon, which were the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Amen. Now, on the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he talked with me and had a golden reed to measure the city and uh, the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, a uh, 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of men. That is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was uh, pure gold, like a declared glass. Now, that's a description uh, that's pretty cool, friends. Really, if you look at that and, and just picture that, that's pretty awesome. That is amazing, that description of that, how beautiful that's going to look. Uh, and the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like a declared glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. And the first foundation, Jasper, the second, Sapphire, the third, uh, Caldoni, and the fourth, an Emerald, the fifth, Sardonyx, the sixth, Sardius, and the seventh, Chrysolite, <coughs> and the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, Topaz, the tenth. A lot, a lot of description on here. Uh, he says, Chrysopolis, the 11th adjacent, the 12th and Amethyst, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was one of, uh, of one pearl, and the street of the city was gold, as it were transparent glass. Can you imagine that, friends? Close your eyes. If you need a peaceful place just to think about for a minute, oh, wow, friends. Can you imagine how awesome that's going to be. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was one of pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty, amen, and the Lamb, which is, of course, we know the Lamb is Jesus there, uh, are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon or shine or to shine in it, for the glory of God to lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Amen. Let me get that notes together here. And, of course, my phone's sleeping. Wake up. Probably going to end up getting a new phone here in the next uh, several weeks or so. Uh, been having some issues with it. Um, it doesn't want to stay... Um, doesn't want to stay on. It just wants to kind of go to sleep and stuff. But I don't know. Always looking. Anyway, <laughs> let's keep going. All right. Um, and I think we were in, uh, let's see, 20. Um, and the nations of them which were saved shall walk. In the light, I believe. No, we were back up a little bit more. Uh, let's go to 22. <clears throat> and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now let's go to 23 here. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk... In the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring the glory and honor of it. And the gates of it shall not be shut up at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they, boy, they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations unto it. All right, and there shall in no wise 
uh, enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever uh, worketh abomination or maketh uh, a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Again, here you go. Uh, that is the key. The, the second book, the Lamb's book of life, right there. Uh, let's go to 22. Amen. A lot of work, <laughs> a lot of homework for me on this one. I can tell already. All right. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it and the other side of the river was there the tree of life, which bear the manner of fruits and yielded the fruit every month and the leaves of a tree were uh, for the healings of the nations. Now, we need some healings, my friends, for sure, right? We need some healings. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall uh, be uh, in it, and the servants, or his servants, shall serve him. Um, I'm going to make sure I didn't skip anything. Uh, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, nor are neither light of the sun, nor the Lord, or the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, Christ is to come soon, right? Amen. Verse 6. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. And behold, I come quickly, he tells us, friends, right there. Behold, I come quickly. Are we prepared? Are we ready? For the end is close, my friends. We are in the end times, and we clearly see uh daily every single day i'm telling you friends it's it's close we're in the end times here blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the of the prophecy of this book and i saw or and i john saw these things and heard them and when i heard and seen i fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things then saith he unto me See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and, uh, I think, there it is, of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Uh, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. <coughs> oh, I'm telling you, friends, this coffin has got to stop. Uh, I have been uh, just like weeks now. This thing hasn't gone away. And I, I that's why I've been off the air for so long. I've been trying to do these little updates here and there. but. Uh, like it's, you know, it just, it's just an aggravating cough and I'm praying and I'm giving it over to God, you know, cause, uh, by his stripes, I am healed and I'm, I'm claiming that friends. So thanks for putting up with it. I appreciate your patience here. I uh, appreciate your time stopping on by the studio here. Thank you guys again. Uh, in the heat, 106 again, hit uh, hit about 106 about two or three days in a row here again. So uh, I've been outside trying to do a little bit of work, but, you know, I got to keep moving. Can't uh, can't let the cough stop me, so I got to keep rolling and moving here. So let's get to it. We got a lot to cover tonight, or today, actually, this afternoon. So let's get, uh, let's get the rest of this up. Now, in eight again, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard them and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. 
Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am <laughs> the fellow servant, he says, uh, and of thy brother and the prophets, <laughs> and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship uh, God. And he said unto, or saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. We can clearly see this. Uh, again, let's get to 11 here as I was briefly interrupted by random coughs. I don't know. <laughs> let's see if we can get to it. And it says in verse 11 here, uh, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still amen right and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his works uh shall be right uh yep there it is uh he says in 13 i am alpha and omega uh the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments uh let's see that they may be right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers. Now, hang on. I got to pop up on my channel again. That happens. You know, you guys know. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, let's see. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Or, or let's see that they may be right uh, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things. Um, in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will let him take the water of life freely and that's his grace friends how awesome is that for i testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and of course we clearly see that as well different religions across the board in different groups of people which I'm not going to get into a discussion about that, uh, have completely dis, like, just desiccated the Bible and changed it to fit their agenda. Well, we're not going to talk about that, but that's clearly what he's saying, is that uh, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So, uh, it's not going to be a good outlook, friends. It's not going to like the outcome is not going to be good uh, if you try to change or add anything to the Bible. Uh, and there are millions of them, thousands, millions uh, across the board that have changed the Bible uh, and the words uh, to fit their personal agenda. That's not going to be a that's not going to be a good outcome, friends. So we got to stick to the word of God. Amen. All right. <laughs> In 19, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away their part or his part uh, out of the book of life and <laughs> out of the holy city uh, and from the things which are written in this book. Uh, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly, amen, even so come uh, the Lord Jesus. Now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, amen. I'm telling you, friends, we got to read our Bibles. we got to stick to the word. 
Amen. Anyway, thank you guys for putting up with the coughing. I, you know, like I said, it's been weeks and uh, I'm still trying to just kind of push through it and, oh, I just kind of get through it and do what I can here. So thank you guys for putting up with all this stuff. I appreciate you. All right. I need some more coffee. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, the heat's on, so <laughs> let's get to it. Let's see. Well, we are going to go into, which is going to be really neat. Um, we're going to take a look at the Orthodox Study Bible here, friends. Uh, we've got a couple of them that I'm reading. Uh, we're going to look at creation and the basis of God's judgment, uh, which is in in uh, Genesis, the first one's in creation in Genesis 1, and then the basis of God's judge is going to be over in uh, Revelation 2 and 3, and then, of course, we're going to go into Revelation or Romans 8. Uh, let's get into our podcast notes, friends. And <laughs> there's them annoying pop-ups, but, you know, they got a purpose in that. I don't know what it is, but... They got a purpose and a point. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, how about we get into the, <laughs> let's see, where am I at here? Notes, my notes wise. Uh, amen. All right. Let's get into our scripture notes here, friends. Good to see you. Good to be back here. Pastor Rick, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast Network for Tuesday afternoon, the 9th. Already, uh, we started this uh, church service a little after three, so we're going to roll with it and keep going. Amen. Uh, let's see. I got to scoot up here. I think everything's okay. I readjusted the uh, camera again because I ended up bumping into it again. It's kind of on a tripod, so uh, like a microphone tripod kind of thing. Uh, and so always had some uh, always had some issues with it. And I I am looking into a wall mount uh, camera. Uh, stand kind of thing, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking at some options. I was going to get that months ago. I never did get a chance, so it's still sitting in the same spot, so hopefully it'll be okay, but anyway, my friends, you know I got me some rabbling time here, some coffee, some rabbling time, and a little bit of Bible study thrown in there. Amen. Uh, glad to see you guys. Melon TV, I'm live today. Uh, recording it live, and then I'll upload it to the channels uh, because, uh, you know, because during the afternoon, usually uh, the Wi-Fi is really horrible. Uh, it, for some reason, I had issues with camera <coughs> shutting off, on off, and then, of course, during the afternoon, Wi-Fi is terrible up here, even with the backup going on. It's still bad and uh, wasn't able to do anything, so either, you know, either after 11, or late night. So I said, well, we're going to try to roll with it and see what happens today. So let's uh, give you guys a good couple of hours podcast here. Uh, amen. <laughs> we'll see how my throat is, but, uh, you know, we're going to get through it here. And um, give you guys a little bit of little bit of podcasting today, a little bit of broadcasting this afternoon for Tuesday. Should be back on the regular schedule after today or tomorrow, maybe back on Restream tv tomorrow i'm trying to rotate these uh every other day or you know every other day on melon tv uh and then of course it's going to be uh, uploaded to twitch tv monday wednesday friday sunday on twitch tv and then the rest of the week it's going to be like kind of rotating back and forth so between melon tv and uh restream tv so there you go you're updated uh you're in the loop you're in the know i appreciate uh, you guys, thank you. Church, amen. All right, let's get to our podcast notes. Always like to include them. Uh, if you have notes, if you got it written down or pulled up on your uh, devices, there, that's a, a good thing. That way, you can always look at them and never, you know, never be without it. So, let's check it out. As we say, dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I need a savior. I want to turn away from my sinful life to the life you have planned for me. Please forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of my past. Make me new. I know your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for me. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And at this very moment, friends, here you go. I confess 
and claim Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Live in my heart from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that has saved me from my sins and has given me eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to guide me and to help me to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Boy, that cop, I'm telling you, man. <coughs> All right, well, amen. All right. By his grace, love, and mercy, my friends. Unmerited, unearned, undeserved. It's a free gift of God, and we love that free gratis gift of God, our Lord and Savior. Boy, is that awesome. Right? Come on now. <laughs> Let me see a raise of hands, friends. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, how about we go into the serenity prayer? Always a favorite. We need that serenity, right, friends? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, of course, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world uh, <laughs> as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next Church, come on, we got to get another big amen on that one. Amen, amen. All right, let's move right along here. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we give them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Church, come on, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Now, that's good stuff, friends. Right out of the box here, that's good stuff. Amen. All right, moving right along, we're going to go on to uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. We're going to take a look at the armor of God. Uh, amen. All right. I think it's coffee time, my friends. That's right. Well, it's always coffee time according to my watch, right? <laughs> Amen. Why not? Even if it's 110, coffee time. Bible time, right? Bible, Bible and coffee time, right? <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. Armor God, right? Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. <coughs> Man. All right. Let's keep rolling here. Now, finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, put on the whole armor of God that uh, he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, Take the helmet of salvation and sword of the Spirit, which we all know is the Word of God. Amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. Praying uh, always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel which I am an ambassador in bonds, that that therein I may speak boldly uh, as I ought to speak. Man. All right. <laughs> well, let's get to some other scriptures here. Uh, what do we got on the menu? Creation. We're going to take a look. Uh, let's see. I want to go romans we are going to look at romans here in a bit uh, 
man. <laughs> I tell you, this this coffin's for the birds. Mercy, it's terrible. I can't get rid of it. It just it just been hanging on for weeks now, and I haven't been able to get rid of anything. Uh, I haven't been able to get rid of it. It's just there. Uh, pretty frustrating. So anyway, I'm gonna keep moving. Keep trying to uh, get going here. Amen. All right, try to get my other Bible here. We are gonna look at the NLT recap series as well too. I do have some things in there I want to look at as well. Well, let's take a look. We're gonna go old school here, friends. We're gonna go back into the Orthodox Study Bible. I uh, haven't been in there too much, but uh, always like to uh, take a look at. They're always good to to look at, and uh, boy, do I appreciate having it. Amen. All right. Well, again, we're going to look at um, uh, Genesis chapter one. We're going to go old school. Look back at uh, a couple of things here. Let's read this, friends. The subtopic is going to be creation, and of course, that's in. Uh, Genesis, again, chapter 1 here in Genesis. Uh, so, again, out of the Orthodox Study Bible. Now, we believe in one God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth and of all uh, things visible and invisible. These opening words of the Nicene Creed, the central doctrinal statement of Christianity, of Firm that the one true God is the source of everything that exists, both physical and spiritual, both animate and inanimate. The Holy Scriptures begin with a similar, uh, similarly striking assertion in the beginning. Uh, oops, hang on here, friends. Give me just a minute. That didn't work out. That didn't work out here. Uh, 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 man, I went to correct it <laughs> and I just didn't help. I didn't help that much at all. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, give me a minute here, friends. Let me get caught up on a couple of things. Um, I went to correct a spot and I just made it worse. So I have to fix that up. All right, let's continue. So I, uh, uh, let's see, we're going to start this one now. The Holy Scriptures begin uh, with sim a similarly striking assertion. Uh, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth, as St. Basil uh, the Great declares, in the fear that human reasons may make you wander from the truth, Moses has anticipated inquiry uh, by engraving in our hearts as a seal and a safeguard the awesome name of God. In the beginning, God created. It is he, beneficent nature. Uh, let's see goodness without measure a worthy object of love for all things endowed with reason the beauty of uh the beauty the most to be desired the origin of all that exists it is he who in the beginning created heaven and earth all right let's go to the next part here now the ever existing almighty god was not forced to create the universe Rather, in his goodness and loving kindness, he freely chose to do so. And the fact that the Lord created the universe out of nothing stands in clear contrast to the creation myths of the surrounding cultures in the ancient world. Amen, right? All right. Now, the central role of, Je of uh, Jesus Christ, the word of the Father, in the creation of all things is plainly stated in the first chapter of the Apostle John Gospel, 
where it is written, in the beginning was the Word, right? All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And the specific role of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the undivided Trinity, in the creation of the world, uh, is seen in Genesis 1, verse 2. And also in Psalms 103, verse 30, and chapter 32, verse 6. Now, regarding questions um, about the scientific accuracy <coughs> of the Genesis account of creation <coughs> above various viewpoints concerning evolution, the Orthodox Church has not dogmatized uh, any particular view. What is, uh, as it says, what is dogmatically proclaimed is that the one triune God created everything that exists and that man was created in a unique way and alone uh, made in the image and likeness of God, right? Genesis 126 and 27. Now the church fathers were co also constantly affirm that each species of the animate creature uh, creation came into existence instantaneously as the command of God with its seed within itself. The development of life was not by accident, rather supreme intelligence and uh, the impenetrable wisdom were at work in the creation and sustenance of all that exists. In discussing various science uh, scientific theories of this day, or his day, St. Basil the Great declared, <coughs> if there is anything in this <coughs> or any other uh, system which seems probable to you keep your admiration of the source of such perfect order the wisdom of god he also wrote we must still remain faithful to the principle of true religion and recognize that all that exists is sustained by the creator's power right now, the repeated affirmation, and God saw that it was good. Genesis 1 underscores the uh, in, intricate, or intrinsicant, right? What is that word? Intrinsic, fundamental goodness of matter, and the whole created order, even after the fall. Now, this understanding in the basis of uh, for a sacramental worldview, that the created order not only is good, but also can be by uh, be a means for communion with God. By virtue of being created for the all-good God, moreover, the astounding beauty, intricate order, and sublime uh, harmony of all aspects of creation, um, as he says, as well as the tremendously vast expanse of the universe, are indeed to draw mankind to an awareness of and an appreciation for the Creator and the worship of Him and Him alone. Psalm 18, 4, Romans 1, 20. So there you go. As uh, we look at uh, Genesis 1. Now let's go ahead and just read real quick here, friends. Why don't we go ahead and just read uh, Genesis chapter 1. Now, the creation, as we were talking about here, as I'm watching the clocks again, uh, in the beginning God made heaven and earth. The earth was invisible and unfinished. The darkness was over the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering uh, over the face of the water. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light, it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening and morning one day. Uh, then God said, 
let there be a firmament or firmament in the midst of the waters and or water and let it divide the uh, the water from the water and it was so thus god made the firmament and god divided the water under the firmament from the water above the firmament so god called the firmament heaven and god saw that it was good my friends yes he did and there was evening and morning the second day uh let's see then god said let the water under heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so uh, losing my channel here uh and he gathered together in one place to let the dry uh dry land appear and it was so and under, under heaven was gathered in its place or places and the dry land appeared so god called the dry land earth and uh and the gathering together of the waters called uh seas uh he called seas and god saw that it was good amen all right double checking the <laughs> channels here i never know i just play it a day at a time here amen <coughs> <coughs> All right. Sorry about that again, friends. I have a persistent cough that isn't going away. I'm praying over it, of course, by his stripes. I'm healed. Uh, I'm doing everything uh, to take caution and, you know, drink my teas and cough drops and stuff. And uh, But uh, I've had a real nagging, persistent cough for weeks now, and uh, that's why I've been off the air. So uh, I'm just kind of trying through it, pushing through it, doing the best I can here. And I wanted to get back on this afternoon to try to get something out to you, uh, you know, uh, a new service here for you. So anyway, thank you guys again for putting up with it. Amen. Let's continue. Um, <clears throat> and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the light bring forth the herb of grass bearing seed according to its kind and likeness. Let the fruit bear uh, fruit. Uh, whose seed is in itself according to its kind on earth, and it was so. Thus the earth brought forth the herb of grass bearing seed according to its kind and likeness. And let's get that continued up there. A uh, root tree bore fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind on earth god saw that it was good there he did so evening and morning were the third day then god said let there be lights in the firmament of heaven for illumination to divide day from night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years let them be for the illumination in the firmament of heaven to give light of on the earth and it was so uh then god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night now he made the stars also and god set them in the firmament of heaven to give light on the earth and the rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness God saw that it was good. Amen. All right. So evening and morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters bring forth creatures having life and let birds fly above the earth uh, across the face of heaven's firmament. It was so. And thus God made great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with uh, which, uh, let's see, which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. God saw that it was good. Uh, God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. 
evening and morning or the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth uh, the living creature according to its kind. Uh, the quadrupeds, the creeping things, and the wild animals of the earth according to uh, to their kind, oh, let's get this up here, uh, to their kind, he says, it was good. So God made the wild animals of the earth uh, according to their kind, the cattle according to their kind, and all the creeping things on earth according to their kind. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have domination or dominion, not domination, but dominion. There it is. Uh, over the, let's see, man of our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh, bu -bu -bu uh, over the birds of heaven, over the cattle. Over all the earth and over every creeping thing that moves on the earth. So God made man uh, in the image of God. He made him male and female. Mercy, friends. Come on now. Male and female. He created uh, man. Oh, let's see. He made them, then God blessed them. As he goes back to, we go back to 27. So God made man, uh, friends, which people can just get twisted. And I don't even want to go there yet uh, on that one. Uh, so God made man, the image of God. He made them male and female. He made them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of heaven, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And again, people get that twisted, and that's a whole nother broadcast, my friends, as we clearly see it. All right, let me let me get that part highlighted. I missed that part. Uh, the last two parts of Genesis 1. Uh, as usual, I never fails here i always try to get as best i can or much as i can and i uh, i seem to miss some parts of the notes here which is par for the course it's uh, you know that's about the usual here um all right mercy looking at the next broadcast uh it's gonna be really interesting we're gonna look at the holy trinity a lot of questions a lot of emails about that so let's close out uh, this one here friends let's go ahead and look at this and yeah, get a couple of notes I missed before. Um, hang on here. Always stuff I miss. You know, I got so much studying to do. It's uh, it's good. I like doing it and I enjoy it. But boy, sometimes I I miss uh, real important notes and key stuff that I I don't get a chance to look at until I'm actually on the air, which is tough sometimes. Uh, so again, thank you guys for your massive amount of patience here. Uh, all right, so <laughs> let's look at the next one here and let's see if I can get that. Then God said in the verse uh, <laughs> 29 here, I believe, uh, Behold, I have given you every seed bearing herb and sow seed. Uh, on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seeds or uh, yield seed to you, it shall be for food. I also uh, give every green plant as food for all the wild animals of the earth, for all the birds of heaven and for everything that creeps on the earth in which is the breath of life. It was so, then God saw everything he had made, uh, and indeed, uh, it was very good. So evening and morning were the sixth day. So there you go, creation in the book of uh, Genesis, friends. Pretty awesome. All right, let's get our clipboard here. 
And uh, let's see. <clears throat> um, yeah, we're going to go to the next one here. The basis of God's judgment. And so let me find that. Um, give me a minute here. Let me get to that next one. Well, I hope you guys are having a great uh, Tuesday so far. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. And there goes my <laughs> my notes there. Um, again, I think my pulpit's up too too high there. My bookmarks keep falling out. Like every time I open up one page, it jumps off and opens up and ends up uh, dropping out here. So there it is, the basis of God's judgment. And I'm going to put this over here so I don't have to worry about it falling. Let's get to it here, friends. And uh, then we're going to jump to the book of Romans, actually. Um, all right, our channels are up. And uh, man, uh, a little over an hour. I told you about two hours on this one, uh, maybe. We got about an hour and 45 minutes on uh, Blog Talk. So I kind of try to schedule around that time frame i uh, usually always goes over anyway so i never know but we are going to look at some things uh again i never know when i'm going to get on here uh i've been battling our wi-fi i've been battling our issues with the uh, you know with the wi-fi shutting off and with uh having issues with melon tv uh i was in a live broadcast uh, a week ago or so i can't remember the exact date but uh the camera kept shutting off and I it just go blank for no reason. I have no idea why it was doing that. So I haven't been able to get on there. So I figured another route, another way to do the podcast is I'll have to record it live, go live on the other channels, and then upload uh, to uh, the channels. So I think there's uh, there's a, a good way to do this. And, and then again, the Next broadcast tomorrow is going to be on Restream TV. So that one, I only had one problem with them uh, so far in the 12 months I've been with them, but I uh, shouldn't have any issues. So we're going to just keep pushing through, and hopefully, like I said, my throat will get better, and I'll stop uh, coughing so much. I know that's annoying, and apologize in advance about that. Uh, that has been uh, the reason why I haven't been on as often as I'd like to is because the just a persistent cough and it's it's irritating even for me. I I'm just like wow, would you just stop coughing for a minute so I can get this out here? Uh, <laughs> anyway, you know the devil just doesn't want to give up, uh, friends. That's the problem is the devil knows his time short. And he certainly just doesn't want to give up. So that's why uh, he's been on the full attack. Uh, so um, that's why I've been, you know, I'm pushing through it. I'm I'm, uh, I'm getting through it here. Let me fix this part, and then we're going to get going to the next broad, or the next uh, message here. I just saw this. These notes are uh, not good here, so I want to make sure I fix this while I can. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -do 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 -do. All right, let's see if we can get through this. So, let's look at it. Um, as I was just kind of looking through um, Revel, not Revelation. What am I thinking Revelation here? Give me a minute. All right. Um... All right. Uh, the basis of, ju of God's judgment. We're going to go into Romans, and I believe that's going to be in chapter 2 um, as I get this notes together. Uh, let's see. Yep. Hang on here, friends. <laughs> Always an issue. Um, let's see. So, even as believing Christians, we must not take the outcome of God's final judgment for granted. Now, again, the subtopic for this one is the basis of God's judgment. And we're looking at Romans chapter 2 on this. Uh, all right. So, 
uh, in every divine liturgy, Orthodox Christians pray for a good defense before the dread judgment seat of of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us, uh, ha our Lord, have mercy. Amen. Oh, my channel went out again. Uh, let's see. So, um, Lord have mercy. Now, Romans 2, 2, 1, 16 describes God's judgment. Showing, again with the bad notes here, this book is all over the place here. Uh, showing how we could prepare ourselves for it. Now, God's righteous judgment will be according to truth in 2, verse 2 and 3. Nothing is hidden from God. He sees everything and knows the truth about each of us. One of mankind's great deceptions is to say, who sees us? And that's going to be in Isaiah 29, 15. Uh, and think there is no judgment. According to impenitent hearts, uh, it's going to be over in 2, 4, and 5. Uh, an unrepentant or hard heart. Uh, let's see. Despises God's. Oh, boy. Uh, goodness, treasuring up the wrath of God at the judge. I can hardly read these notes on this Orthodox study Bible. I haven't been in there for a while. So bear with me, you guys. We're going to get through it. So is goodness me uh, measuring up uh, the wrath of God at the judgment? A repentant heart, on the other hand, uh, is grateful for God's patience and abide in Christ, practicing a life of repentance which produces confidence before him at the judgment. Now, that's 1 John 2, uh, 28 on that one. Now, according to our deeds, and I got to fix this. Terrible. Man, oh, man. I can't believe I did that. Hold on here, friends. Give me a minute. Yeah, let me get this settled in here. Uh, not going to do a whole lot. Um, it's not looking good here, but, uh, I will work on that later. Uh, all right. According, as he says, according to our deeds, uh, 2, 6, 15, the doing good referred to in 2, 7 is not an attempt to get, uh, let's see. Oh boy. Uh, to... Judgment with God. Rather, and I will have to fix that too. Uh, it is a unity of intentions with actions, faith with works. Even unbelievers are rewarded for good works according from spiritual understanding to 14, 15. But note the following. And this is kind of broken down into two, uh, I believe, 2A here, or A, B, and C here. So let's look at that. Now, doing good means seeking God's glory. That's 210. Not our own glory. God's uh, honor, not our own honor. Uh, the eternal reward of immortality, not reward here. And now doing good is... Uh, seeking first the kingdom of God. Of course, we know that in Matthew. Uh, it's in Matthew 6, verse 33. B, God intentions alone or faith without works will not save. Friends. Did you hear that? Uh, faith without works will not save. Uh, to set our 2.13. Now, simply to hear and not do is religion without reality. Those with true faith, the doers of the truth, practice virtue from pure and repentant hearts. That's James uh, 1, 21 through 27. And C, by nature, verse 14, people are inspired and cooperate with God's grace. Therefore, good deeds are natural to us. Whereas evil deeds are contrary to nature because we all fail, friends. 
We all fail. Uh, we need God's mercy, 3, 9 through 19. The pressure of God's law in our conscience, 215, condemns anything we do contrary to human, uh, true human nature. Therefore, even Gentiles or non-Jews, people not under the law of Moses, those who do not know of Christ have an eternal law from God, the natural law written in their hearts. I'm just trying to keep up on a couple of notes here. Now, according which God will judge them, Melchizedek, Job, and the Ninevites uh, are Old Testament examples of non-Jews judged to be righteous. Jews then have two laws from God, the law of Moses and conscience. If you want to write that down in your notes, there it is. Uh, the law of Moses and conscience. Now, and are accountable to him for both. That's 2.12. And D, here, friends. Those who are condemned chose to reject God. There is no automatic faded uh, condemnation. God's just judgment of us is based on our exercise of free will. Although sin impair, uh, impairs our powers, it does not destroy uh, God's image of us uh, or cut free will or our free will. That's not cut, but our free will. There it is. Uh, amen. Right? All right, and four, I believe. Let's see. By Jesus Christ, uh, chapter two, sixteen. In the day of judgment, we are not judged directly by God the Father, whom we cannot see, but by the incarnate Son, whom we do see, Christ Jesus. That's over in Acts seventeen, verse thirty-one. There, friends, on that one. And John chapter 3, 16, 21, 35, and 36. Now Christ will judge on the basis of light he himself has given to each of us. John 1, 9. Uh, right there. And our responses to his light. John 3, 16, 21. The secrets of men... In Romans 2.16 are the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's over in Hebrews 4.12. So there you go. Uh, I know that I'm yet to get through, but uh, we looked at the basis of God's uh, judgment there. So let me pull this around here, see if I can. Oh, mercy. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can read here, friends. Let's go in our Bibles, if you will, and let's go read the Bible scriptures here, church. Uh, amen on this uh, happening, fantastic, hot Tuesday, 106 again here. I'm staying indoors as best much as I can anyway. Got a little bit of work to do tomorrow, but uh, we'll see how things go. All right, let me correct this. <laughs> man, oh, man. Um, amen. So we're going to go into Romans chapters two and three, and of course, eight in our notes. Got a little bit more for you. Probably hang out here a little bit more, uh, as best I can anyway. I'm trying not to strain my voice too much, uh, but I do want to get uh, some of this out. So bear with me. All right, so let me get up some coffee here, and uh, it's a good thing I got my extra water as well, so. All right, let's get to it. Chapter 2 in the Book of Romans here, friends. All right, uh, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. Whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth 
against them which commit such things, and this thou this man, but judge them which do such things, and do us the same, but thou shalt escape the judgment of God? I don't think so, right? Uh, or despiseth thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and an impenitent heart treasureth up unto thyself, uh, as it says, wrath against the uh, day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek the uh, for glory and honor and immortality, uh, eternal life. For unto them that are contentious, or contentious, there it is, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, uh, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. Now, God is not receptor or respecter of persons. Let's take a look at that here. Uh, but glory, honor, and peace. And let's maneuver the microphone once again. Uh, <laughs> man, to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned or have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many have sinned in law shall be judged by the law. Be careful about that. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law, um, unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, uh, the meanwhile accusing or else accusing one another, as we see. All right. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, he says. He tells us right there. Now, Let's look at the next one here in verse 17, the Jew and the law, brothers and sisters. In 17, behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and appro approvest. There it is. I had to sound it out just like you're in school. You got to sound out them words. Amen. Uh, approvest. The things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide, a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in dark. And we know, uh, friends, those that are in the darkness, right? Yeah. Amen. Oh, that's why it was <laughs> it was coming loose. My microphone spot was coming loose again. I don't know. <sighs> Amen. All right. <laughs> it's always a battle with my phone. I like it, but uh, you know, it can be uh, quite daunting here to try to set this up, make sure this sits in right there. Uh, amen. All right. I know I was messing with my microphone and a Bible study broke out. Mercy. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, man. All right. Pop up on my. Uh, computer here, give me a minute. Let me get that there. Let me get that there, my friends. All right, let's keep rolling. Uh, we're in Romans chapter 2, as we are. Uh, amen. All right, so behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. 
and art confident that thou self art a guide of the blind, a light of them. Again, going back to that, friends, of the darkness, right? Which are of the darkness, or in darkness. <laughs> An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou there... For which teaches another, teachest thou not thyself? Uh, thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that adorest or abhorrest uh, idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? And the name of God is blaspheme among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thou circumcision is made uncircumcision. Now, therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for uncircumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, it is, or if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that uncircumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And that's where we've got to keep our eyes on the prize there, friends. Uh, amen. Just trying to check the timing here. And then, chapter 3, what advantage has the Jew we look at? Hang on here, friends. Let me get my monitor up here. Well, after 440 here on your dial, friends, back on the air. I uh, had to make sure, uh, you know, like I said, I want, I've want been off for a while. I just haven't had a chance to uh, really uh, do much because... Uh, because of the persistent coughs that have not let me uh, get on here. I just, it too, was impossible to try to talk. Uh, now, I did do a couple of, you know, a couple of uh, updates there. And, uh, boy, that was, that was tough. That was uh, <laughs> a bit rough there. So, uh, I wasn't able to... <laughs> I wasn't able to get through uh, the podcast there. And then we had our issues with Mellon uh, losing the camera, losing the, you know, the everything on it. It just kind of crashed on me. So I'm like, nah, uh, shut her down for a while. And then, <laughs> and then I kind of thought about it. Well, I, you know, I could record it live and then upload it uh, as long as, you know, as long as the Wi-Fi holds up, I'm okay. Uh, and I think there's even a backup for that, that even if there isn't any wi-fi you can still upload it until the wi-fi comes back on which uh you know which was good so i thought kind of you know a to b to plan z you know just kind of figure it out and work around it and uh so as i'm looking at the monitor here um it looks like it's holding up so i think uh you know i might have to um, we'll try going live um Wednesday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Thursday, I'll be live back here on Mellon. Tomorrow night, uh, around 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I'll be live on Restream TV. Uh, again, you guys know I, I kind of switch up the channels there just to give you a little different view, a little little different, um, you know, a little bit, uh, different effects. Uh, they, they rotate them out. So uh, that's pretty awesome stuff. Uh yeah, anyway, get some rabble time in there. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mellon TV, you're live. We're here. Good to see you guys again uh, for Tuesday, August 9th. We'll up to 4.30 here, Pacific uh, Standard Time, PST there. Uh, 
I'm your host, having coffee, reading the Bible, sharing the Word of God. Pastor Rick here, Studio A. Good to see you guys. Uh, always, uh, always enjoy uh, our church service, our worship service together. Uh, again, jumping on early in the afternoon. I uh, wasn't going to wait till 10 o'clock. I've got some errands to run and a couple of things to do. So I thought I said, well, self, I think we need to be preaching here. I think we need to jump online and, and get going one way or the other. Let's try it. Let's uh, see how it works out. So again, this is going to be uploaded to all the channels. Uh, you guys will be able to get this uh, on your, wherever you're subscribed to, and wherever you're following, wherever your podcasts are, are at, you'll be able to get to them. So, uh, amen, it's a blessing, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. I do. I really do. <laughs> so, thanks for putting up with all this uh, craziness I like to call a podcast here, friends. You guys are awesome. Springer.com, you're live on the air. Block Talk Radio. You guys are live on the air. Anchor Castbox just finished up that first hour. You're in your second hour, brothers and sisters, and we are uh, checking out Romans here, friends. Romans chapter 3, let's go into that, and let's take a look at that as we just finished our notes with uh, the uh, the Orthodox Study Bible, um, the basis of God's judgment here, friends. So we're looking at some... Uh, books of Romans here. So let's keep going. We got chapter three, and then I'm going to go into chapter eight. So what advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Uh, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? <coughs> God forbid. Yea, let God be true that every man a liar, as it is written, <laughs> that thou mightest... <coughs> Mercy. Sorry about that, friend. I told you. <coughs> the more I talk, the worse it gets. But I'm going to keep pushing through. we got a lot left to cover. Uh, and I want to get this message out, so bear with me, you guys. I appreciate your patience here. Just bear with me. Uh, I'm going to continue to probably cough throughout the podcast, but I'm, I want to get through this, and I want to get this message out. So thank you guys for being so patient here. All right, so let's go, <laughs> go back. Ah, uh, mercy. Let's go back to verse 3. For what? If some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Ah, uh, yea, let God be true. But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend uh, the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh uh, vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather as uh, we be slanderously reported. And as some affirm that we say, let us do evil. That good may come whose damnation is just. Uh, there is none righteous. Now watch this, friends. Romans chapter 2 and 3 here. We're in chapter 3. In verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none 
that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have uh, used deceitful. <coughs> Mercy, that hurts. <laughs> they, and I knew that was going to happen. I just felt that coming on. Uh, so, again, bear with me, guys. I appreciate it. All right. So let's keep going. So we're talking about in verse... Uh, 9, 10, 11 here. Uh, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Uh, with their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Uh, whose mouth full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Uh, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that, with, uh, that what things uh, soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may or world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by his law is the knowledge, or by the law uh, is the knowledge of sin. Amen. Hang on, I unplug my cord. That's why I'm getting some new, fresh, wireless Bluetooth. I can't wait for that. Uh, changing some things out again, but I'm going to go Bluetooth wireless uh, in probably this weekend. I'm not sure. It should be coming here. I ordered some uh, updates here, updated stuff. Uh, amen, and uh, just waiting patiently for it to come in. So it would be pretty awesome. So, Amen. Although I like this, you know, I do like the headset. It is a great, uh, you know, uh, great improvement from where I was at before. But I think I need to go wireless, and uh, I think it's going to be okay. So we'll see. All right, let's keep going. Got a lot to cover here uh, in this last, uh, last 20, 30 minutes or so. I think we've got a little bit of time here. Amen, amen. All right, let's get to it. Uh, we're still in three. Righteousness through faith. Now, in verse 21, let's kind of read a little bit. Let's go back. Uh, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, friends. I'm going to move that up <laughs> just a little bit more. There you go. Uh, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, my friends, being justified freely by his grace uh, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth. To be a propitiation, friends, through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by the law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. 
seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through the faith? Or through faith, God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Now, you guys get to read the rest of Romans. Now, we're going to jump all the way over to Romans 8, uh, friends. So, we want to check that out. So, let's go uh, stay in Romans for a minute here. Let's go ahead and uh, get to Romans 8, more than conquerors, life. In the Spirit, which, uh, you know, it's one of my go-to scriptures. I always love uh, going through that. Amen. All right. Now, we're again, we're, we're taking a look at the basis of God's judgment. We're in the book of Romans, chapters 2 and 3. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, go into uh, Romans chapter 8. I still got a lot left to cover. But uh, we'll keep it around two hours uh, as best I can anyway. Uh, <laughs> you never know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I never know how long I'm going to be. But uh, as long as my throat holds up a little bit here, I'll be able to keep going. Uh, so let's, uh, let's keep trying. Let's keep going here, friends. I want to give you a good Tuesday afternoon Bible study. Uh, good service here. I'm in some church today. Uh, amen. Well, like I said, I felt good enough to go ahead and go on. I'm still, like I said, massively coughing. Uh, that can't, I, I'm not, that hasn't been able to, you know, I haven't been able to change that, but, uh, I'm going to do the best I can here. Uh, you know, we got to keep the devil agitated, friends. We got to keep him on his toes, you know. Amen. Let's read some scriptures, my friends. Let's go ahead and keep going. We got, uh, Romans chapter 8, life in the spirit, more than conquerors. Let's check my headset. There it is. That's why I'm excited about going Bluetooth here. That's going to be pretty awesome. A great improvement for the podcast here. Seems to be the way things are, friends. All right, let's roll through, my brothers and sisters, life in the spirit, Romans chapter 8. Now, friends, as we know, there for... Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And again, with the microphone. Man, I'm telling you, friends. <laughs> Man. All right. Uh, so, as we know, as we continue here. Yeah, let's get to that. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Friends, how awesome is that, right? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, neither indeed be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit of life because um, of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren... As we were bought at a price, uh, friends, 
We are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Now, in verse 15, friends, let's look at that. Uh, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again uh, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby, church, we cry, Abba, Father. Amen? The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be uh, that we suffer, now watch this, if we suffer uh, with him, that we may also, or be also glorified together. Now that's a good thing, right? So we've got to suffer a bit, but we're going to be glorified with him. Amen? Uh, amen. Glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And we got to remember that, friends. It may seem like a big situation, you know, and a big time of trouble and a big, you know, situation. But as he says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And that's in verse 18, Romans chapter 8 here, friends. Uh, amen. Now, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption in the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation, friends, groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, uh, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for, friends, right? Amen. Let's continue. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it, my friends? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as God, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us groans which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god now here we are here we go buckle up amen more than conquerors my friends and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be therefore uh, firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we say or then say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? Now turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, if God be for us, right? Who can be against us? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Now he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth, who is he that condemneth. It is Christ that died, yea, rather, uh, that is risen again, 
who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us? Now, here we go. We, this is really important. This is really key uh, when we get in these situations. Uh, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Uh, as it is written, for thy sake they are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And boy, is that awesome. I love that scripture. Uh, that is awesome. And we got to remember that, friends, when we get hit uh, by our uh, life's trials and tribulations. Uh, and you know, we're going to get it, friends. Uh, we are. Uh, we have to remember our scriptures and we got to go into our word and just, you know, continue to give it over to God because he, uh, you know, he, he's going to see us through. So, oh, that's awesome. That's just an awesome scripture. I love going into Romans 8. Uh, always been good. Uh, one of my go to scriptures. So, there you be. <laughs> Amen. Oh, we still got a few more left. I don't know. We're almost at the two hours, so I won't go too far over two hours again here. Uh, but uh, kind of uh, feeling a little bit better. Not too much, but, uh, you know, my throat is a little bit better. Um, not too bad, not too much here. So, uh, amen. So just checking messages. Not much going on there. Uh, got a message from my uh, one of my neighbors there a little earlier. And uh, so just kind of double checking things. So. Amen. So, yeah, I still got a lot more scriptures left to do. I'm not sure we're going to get through all of them, but uh, we'll try here. Um, amen. See how we do. And then I'll upload this and get this uh, out to every podcast channel I got. Amen. So, let's get to the word, and uh, let's get back here on this one. And what do I want? Is that it? Twenty-two, actually. I looked at the wrong pages. Amen. It always keeps me on my toes. I never know. Uh, as I kind of go from note to note here, um, I, I try to, you know, make sure I got these, uh, you know, the scriptures and stuff. I try to get them uh, to where they, um, well, they're accurate. Uh, that's the word I want. It's, it's so that they're accurate and I know where, you know, where to go and where to turn to. So, mm -hmm. Um, amen. So let's go ahead and write that down. Give me a minute here, friends. Bear with me. Uh, 4041. We may end up closing out with that. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll kind of have to play it by ear here and uh, kind of see where I'm at. Um, an awful lot of scriptures I got. Uh, amen. So maybe we'll see. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40 and 41, my friends. Let's go ahead and chat out. Let's go ahead and read that. And then I, I'll kind of see how things are at because we're going to be uh, just at about two hours here. Uh, and I don't want to go uh, too much over that. Uh, and plus, I need to rest my voice, and uh, I have a couple more updates to do. Uh, the TikTok channel and uh, ra uh, <laughs> Rizzle, not Razzle, but Rizzle. And then uh, possibly going back over uh, to uh, the Wisdom channel. Now, I haven't been on there as often. 
Uh, I'm kind of slowing down on that channel. I did do a couple of updates, but I'm still kind of getting attacked on there, which is normal. Uh, you know, it's typical of the the witchcraft and uh, all that stuff. It's it's pretty normal. I uh, you know, and I ex I expect the attacks there for sure, uh, which is not surprising. So, you know, <laughs> another day. <laughs> Another day in church here, right? Get the attacks and, eh, not going to worry about that, as we just read. All right, let's get to a couple chapters, or a couple books here, a couple chapters. Uh, let's check out uh, Isaiah 40 and 41. Now, comfort ye comfort, ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received of the lord's hand double for all her sins the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness prepare ye the way of uh of the lord make straight in the desert as i always say uh the highway for our god every valley shall be exalted every man in hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? Uh, and let's see, now all flesh is grass, and all the goodliness uh, therefore is as of the flower of the field checking out the time there the grass withereth and the flower fadeth because the spirit of the lord bloweth upon it surely the people is grass uh the grass withereth the flower fadeth uh the word of god of our god shall stand forever amen right all right. Um, now, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up thee in a high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold our God. And behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and in the arm shall rule, uh, rule for him. And behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and they shall, or he shall gather the lambs uh, with his arm and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Amen. The majesty of the Lord, who, and there goes our crazy phone, our crazy uh, channel there. All right, let's keep going. We got chapter tw or verse twelve here. Who hath measured water in the hollow of his hand and meted out, uh, meted out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in the scales and the hills in a balance? Who? hath directed the spirit of the Lord and being his counselor, or being his counselor without, uh, counselor hath taught him, with whom took he counsel, and he instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. And behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust uh, of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, for the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom... Uh, as we are in 40 here, to whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melted a graven image, and the, golden, or the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast a silver chain. He that is impoverished, that hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman 
to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Uh, hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? Uh, he liveth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Uh, that bringeth the princes to nothing, to make the judges of the earth as vanity. Yet, or yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and he shall blow upon them. Uh, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then he will liken me, or shall I be equal with the Holy One? <coughs> Mercy. Uh, lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. For he that is strong in power, uh, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, Jacob, and speak, uh, speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over uh, for my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, and neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, friends. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall uh, run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. All right, let's uh, run on over to 31. I think we're going to go ahead and close that out. Uh, amen. And uh, after 5 p.m. here. So let me get my notes. And amen. All right. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and close out here. Um, and then, oops. Da -do, da -do, do, 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 do. Amen. So yeah, we'll we'll jump on. Uh, we'll close out this one, and then we'll just jump on the other one uh, after this. Um, got a lot for you. Like I said, uh, always, <laughs> always a great amount of podcast scriptures for you, uh, friends. We did cover a lot in this two hours, so always appreciate being back on here online there and uh yeah let's uh let's keep rolling and then we'll close like i said we'll go ahead and close out with 41 here friends uh isaiah chapter 41 let's close out with this now keep silence before me O islands and let the people renew their strength let them come near and let them speak let us come near together uh to judgment who raised up the righteous man from the east called him to his foot gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings he gave them as the dust to his sword and is driven stubble to his bowl amen uh or to his bow now he persuade them and passed safely even by the way that he had not gone with his feet who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. The isles saw it, and feared the ends of the earth were afraid. Not near, and come, or came. Uh, they helped everyone, his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, Be of good courage, church. Uh, so the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth, with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, and seed, or the seed of Abraham, friend. 
thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. Uh, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with me. Uh, be not dismayed. Uh, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Uh, yea, I will uphold thee, the right hand of my righteousness. There it is. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They shall strive, or they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contend with thee. Uh, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, call, let's see, uh, God will hold with their right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. So there he's given us promise right there, friends. He will help us, right? Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And behold, caught up in my cord here, mercy. <laughs> Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help, help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shalt the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, <laughs> and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in, uh, in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water, <coughs> there is none, uh, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I am the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree, and I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine <coughs> and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the lord oh mercy here it comes again <coughs> i knew the wave of, of coughs is going to happen here so bear with me we're about to close out uh and i will plant in the wilderness the cedar again the shita tree and the myrtle and the oil tree and i will set it to desert the fir tree and the pine and the box together Amen, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this, and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Now, apart from the Lord, there is no hope. So, apart from the Lord. <coughs> uh, man, all right. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong season, or your reasons, saith the Lord, King of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things that they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them and declare us uh, or declare us for thing, uh, things to come. For to come. There it is. Uh, <laughs> show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work are not of not an admonition. Uh, admonition, there it is. Got to sound it out. Is he that choseth you? I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name, he shall call upon princes as upon uh, mortar, and as a putter treadeth clay, who hath declared from the beginning 
that we may know, and before time that we may say, He is righteous, yea, there is none that showeth, yea, there is none that declareth, and yea, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, Beholdeth them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. Let's fix that mess. Wow. For I behold, there is no man even among them, uh, and there was no counselor that when I ascend a, or asked of them could answer a word. And behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. And there you go, my brothers and sisters. Wow, that was a lot of scriptures to read. But, you know, that was on the uh, menu there. And I wanted to make sure we got those scripture notes together there. Uh, how awesome was that? Uh, so there you go. And again, I will uh, I'll continue that on the next podcast. I'll get all these notes together here. Uh, and, uh, we'll continue that on the next, on the next broadcast, probably tomorrow. Like I said, if anything changes, I'll let you know, but, uh, probably, um, <laughs> probably, let's see what we got here, uh, tomorrow, friends. So, amen. All right. A lot of scriptures left to go to. We've got about six or so, but that's okay. We'll get those on the next broadcast. I'll work on the notes here, uh, and uh, I'll get those uh, set up and reset for tomorrow. So 10 o'clock, back here, Restream TV. We're going to go live on that one. So that that's one we've never had any uh, too many issues with anyway. Um, it's just been this one, and so uh, with Melon... Uh, with Melon TV, it's been kind of an issue. We've been having some problems with it. So, uh, Block Talk Radio, hey, let me close you out. Good to see you. Um, let's see where we got. And let me see if I can get let's see if I can get that down here. Mercy, hang on here, friends. Give me a minute. And let me go there. All right, Block Talk Radio, you guys have been awesome. I appreciate you here. It is uh, Tuesday, August 9th, uh, almost 5.30 here, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network for the afternoon bo- podcast at 3 o'clock p.m., my friends. Good to see you. I'll see you on the next broadcast. Take care. This is our first service podcast today, friends. Melon TV, we're here. Amen, friends. That's it. Uh, Black Hack Radio, take care, and I'll see you soon. Now, you guys on the other channels, Hold that thought. Let me get to the this one here. Amen. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Mercy. <laughs> Boy, that cough is miserable. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, friends, I am struggling so much here throughout this podcast. I have been struggling uh, to try to talk. Uh, it has not been easy, uh, but I appreciate your patience here with me. Uh, for sure. So bear with me. Let me close some of these channels out. Uh, I'll be back up uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon here. Um, Mercy, let's see if I can close out this one. All right. So yeah, Block Talk Radio, that's it for me. Let me close that out. Uh, Spreaker.com, you guys are good to go. I'll talk to you on the next uh, broadcast here. So hold on, uh, Melon TV. Uh, Spreaker Channel 1 and Channel 3. Uh, see you on the next broadcast. Take care. All right. There's that one. Always so much to do. It's amazing. And let's go ahead and close out uh, a couple of these other channels here. I'll make sure I get them done. Uh, amen, friends. Amen. Good, good study today. Good church service. I know, even though I was coughing a lot, um, that's just part for the course. Uh, pretty tough, uh, to you know, keep talking, kind of do all that thing. So, anyway, that's it for me. Springer Channel 3. I'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Mel and TV, hold that thought. You guys have been awesome. Uh, amen. All right, so there you go on that one, and I'll see you soon, friends. Spreaker.com, Channel 3.
See you soon. All right. And there it is. So let me get to that. And mercy. Always a lot to do. You know that, uh, friends. Always uh, a lot to do here. So, all right. That's it. I appreciate you guys here. Melon TV, a little after five, almost 5.30 here. Uh, Pastor Rick, will Wildlife Ministry Podcast Network for Tuesday, August 9th. See you on the next broadcast, friends. I'll see you over on uh, Restream TV. We're going live on that one. Uh, amen, friends. I'll see you soon. Amen. Thanks a lot. You guys appreciate it. Oops.